के साथ मैं इस बिल का समर्थन करते हुए अपनी बात को समाप्त करता हूँ धन्यवाद माननीय सदस्य श्री कृष्णा प्रसाद तेनेती जी ऑनरेबल चेयरमैन सर Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity on speaking such a wonderful and very very important important and watershed bill for this year 2025. Dear sir, I rise today on behalf of my party and our honourable leader, honourable Chief Minister Sri Nara Chandrababu Naidu ji, to express the support for the sustainable harnessing and advancement of uh, nuclear energy for transforming India. In short, Shanti Bill. 2025. The very name, sir, of this bill reflects our nation's resolve to harness nuclear energy responsibly and strategically for national development and long-term sustainability in line with the aim of an Atma Nirbhar Vikasit Bharat by 2047. Honorable Speaker, sir, our country's journey in atomic energy is deeply rooted in scientific temperament and national foresight. Dr. Homi J. Baba, the architect of India's nuclear program, viewed atomic energy as a driver of development and self-reliance. His vision was complemented by the develop defense developments under Sri Babu Jagjivan Ramji, whose political resolve as defense minister showcased India's nuclear capabilities on the international stage with smiling Buddha in 1974, thereby aligning scientific advancement with national security and sovereignty. Honorable Chairperson, sir, Dr. Baba, Homi J. Baba ji, has envisioned Atmanirar Bharat on three stages. We started by talking about uranium, and from uranium, after two stages to thorium, because I want the House to understand India has 25% of the global reserves of thorium in our country. Had it not been for the NDA government and, with, and the vision of the, our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, we couldn't have come to the third stage. We passed, we passed for several years, nearly 50 years in between, we didn't go forward. So the, well, now we have come. After the second stage, from 2015 amendments, which sped up development in nuclear energy to the historic entry into phase two of India's nuclear plan in 2024, wherein our Prime Minister witnessed the commencement of core loading, core loading at, core loading at in your own stage in India's first indigenous fast breeder, fast breeder reactor at Kalpa. I will come to you, sir. I will come to you. Please. Please, please recollect, please recollect the core no. loading in your, which happened in your own state, in the India's first indigenous fast breeder reactor at Kalpakam in Tamil Nadu. Is it a fact? Honorable Chairperson, sir, globally speaking, where are we? Globally speaking, where are we? Countries like United States of America, France, Slovakia, European Union countries, and Japan, generate and consume a substantial share of their electricity from nuclear power, exceeding 50% of total electricity generation. Whereas, in India, we are only at 3%. We have a long way to go. We should go. We should develop an ecosystem. We are on that path. We are on the way, thanks to the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji. And... No. No, this bill facilitates greater investment, innovation, and efficiency while maintaining sovereign control. I repeat, this bill facilitates greater investment, inno innovation, and efficiency while maintaining sovereign control. It enhances ability, India's ability to attract long-term foreign investment in nuclear infrastructure, reactor components, and allied technologies. This roadmap will help us to scale up to 100 gigawatts by 2047. And again, I'm recalling, I want the House to recall, today we are only at 8 gigawatts as compared to 98.7 gigawatts of America already. Now, there was a question raised, my friend has gone out, 
Mr. Manish Tiwari ji, about the foreign investment or the private sector role, and also about the accountability with respect to the supplier versus operator. Let me explain to you, to the House and to the people of my country, my people in my constituency, through you, sir. In, if you look at the constellation in America, the private sector companies, Constellation Energy, their, their nuclear capacity is 10.7 gigawatts in the private sector. Duke Energy, 10.7 gigawatts, whereas my country today is still at 8 gigawatts. Vistra Corporation, 6.4 gigawatts in USA. Tennessee Valley Sea Authority, 8.3 gigawatts. Next energy, extra energy is 6.2 gigawatts. I can go on. I have a very long list of private sector. And this is the role that private sector companies, while following all security, while following the security protocols in America, are producing, each company is producing as much as my entire country is producing. Sir, should not my country grow? Should not my country produce more? And we are on that path. We should do that. And, sir, when we are marching ahead, there are several people who will comment, but we should not look at them. We should march ahead. Sir, honorable chairperson, sir, nuclear energy offers three decisive advantages to us. First, it provides reliable base load power for more than 60 years. Six, second, it contributes significantly to carbon reduction. Third, a robust nuclear ecosystem catalyzes high-end manufacturing, research, and skilled employment. I would like to emphasize on this word, skilled employment. I'll come to it again, sir. Honorable Chairperson, sir, I wholeheartedly welcome and support the emphasis this bill places on research, development, and innovation especially in regards to using nuclear energy for research into next generation technologies focused on healthcare and agriculture. Clause 9 of the bill promotes research, development, design, and innovation in matters related to nuclear energy and radiation for peaceful purposes, while Clause 38 allows for patents in for the same. This is in line with the government support for more than 15,000 crores for research development and innovation, further spurring the growth of scientific temper and research in our country. Finally, sir, with respect to the liability and accountability, my observation is, all of us are here can recall, the then Congress government of the 1980s, under incompetence in handling the Bhopal gas disaster, the world's worst industrial disaster, which led to generations of thousands of families suffering with, while those responsible for the disaster were allowed to fly out of the country. Exactly from this point of view, today we are now talking about this great bill where the entire onus is on the operator. No operator can run away from this country and that is, he has to literally take care of all this. So therefore, right from the day one, from the day of supplies itself, the operator will have to be very, very careful, not only from installation of the plant, but also to the operation and the process of the entire process of generating power. Finally, sir, my final suggestion is, I would like to make a request to you, sir, through the Honorable Minister and to the government. We should also consider launching skill development initiatives and infrastructure to train our youth and give them the proper tools to benefit from us opening our doors of nuclear energy to the international markets. Sir, you may recollect, you may recall, when the IT bubble came into our country in 1990s, because we have trained our youth much in advance, we're also now talking about cloud, because we are training our youth much in advance, not only we are taking care of the requirements in our country, but we are also sending our youth all over the world, all over the globe, to take care of this industry, sir. So therefore, my request is why will BARC and NPCIL operate training schools, fellowships, and retraining schemes for engineers, scientists, and technicians. We must boost their efforts by upgrading and expanding the existing skill development programs of public infrastructure. Our youth should be trained to contribute globally in this industry also.
In this spirit, sir, I would like to propose establishing a center of excellence in nuclear energy research and skilling in my home state, Andhra Pradesh, and new training programs and skill centers across our country, especially in my constituency, Bapatla, sir. <laughs> Finally, in conclusion, sir, Dr. J. Babaji once famously said, I believe in excellence. It is not enough to be good. We must be the best. Our youth should be the best. Inspired by the spirit and encouraged by our NDA government's strong track record under the leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji over the last decade, I stand in support of this bill and our vision for Atmanirbhar Vikasit Bharat and Swarnandra Pradesh. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Honorable Member. Manane Sadesha Sri Supriya Suleji. Thank you, sir.